After context analysis, we now enter into project designing. In context analysis, we talked about different frameworks such as the sustainable livelihood framework. But even before that, we have already been discussing about different frameworks in various CD classes. There are frameworks for development, people-centered development, empowerment, gender equality, inclusion, etc. To simplify things, a general framework starts with the current state, which we try to define, determine, or make sense through the context analysis phase. Project design jumps off to determining the desired change or vision or aspirations of the community. What is the future state that we want to have if the current state is not ideal? By recognizing the difference, we start asking what is our strategy to reach the desired change. In community development, we recognize that poverty exists, but it's, it's not avoidable. We recognize both individual and structural obstacles that reinforce power and inequality, suppress freedom, and continuously trample on basic rights of the people. We also recognize that development is not inevitable. Development will not just happen or will not just be given. However, we believe that development is innate and inherent, that people do have aspirations, and we do want a change for the better and that we are doing something to reach that desired state. Sometimes, the aspirations are not well-defined and the incremental steps and changes are not evident because of the dire situation we are in. But we have to realize and respect that that process is already in motion. As CD practitioners, we know that the desired development change is not delivered by outsiders. If it is, it will not be sustained without a price that will just reinforce the poverty and inequality. As outsiders, we can only facilitate and support this process of development through capacity development. Projects do not deliver development, but it can embody our capacity development role. Here are some examples of an analysis current state, the desired change, and strategy for the protection of women and children. We can easily be caught up in projects. Sometimes, we are too busy implementing activities and meeting project deliverables that we lose sight of the essentials of these activities. By determining the current state, we remember that the intervention needs to be relevant. What is the reason behind the intervention? By clarifying the desired change, we are able to check if we are effective in our interventions. By defining our strategy and approach, we are able to check if there is synergy in our efforts. The key elements in good project design are first focus on the results, the desired change. Next, focus on development effectiveness, such as community ownership, empowerment, gender, and inclusiveness, community capacity development, ensure community participation, and stakeholder engagement. These are the key elements in good project design. In project designing, we have to clear with our results chain. This involves defining our resources, which we will use to produce results and changes. The inputs will be used for our activities. Our activities will produce outputs. Our outputs will produce outcomes. And these outcomes will provide the impact that we want. Take note that in implementation, the process is from left to right. From inputs, activities, outputs, outcomes, impact. Within project designing, we first define the impact then the outcomes, then the outputs, then the activities, and then what inputs do we need. It goes in the opposite direction. Remember, we focus on the desired change. We also note that there are different formats, approaches, which agencies use for defining the results chain. Get the basics right. 
then adjust accordingly to fit the format. Ensure that the community knows how and why adjustments are made. The common difficulty here is actually determining the difference between activities and change. Often when we ask for change, people will just give a rundown of activities. But activities are not the change that we want. What we really want are the outputs, outcomes, and then the impact. The basic project design questions, which we usually answer in a project proposal, are these. For the context, we ask for whom, who are the target community, who are the target beneficiaries, clients, where, where's the location, at what scale, national, local, assuming what, what are our assumptions that this, for the context of this project. Then we define what are our strategies, how, what's our approach, what are, what's our methods, who, who will implement the project, who are the proponents and partners, what will they do, what are the tasks, what are the activities, when, what's the time frame, what's the duration of each activity, with what, what resources are needed, what's the desired result, the project will deliver what, the outputs, for what, the outcomes, so what, the impact. How do we measure all of this? The indicators. How do we make a theory of change? First of all, we determine the long-term outcome. Define the goal the program or project wants to reach. Sometimes we call this the positive opposite before problem. We do this so that we can keep the stakeholders focused and motivated. We ensure everyone has a level of definition of what we really want. Then we define causal pathways or backwards mapping. We work out the preconditions or requirements to achieve the goal and explain why. Sometimes we call this the reverse problem tree. Pathways are sequences of outcomes to reach the long-term goal. Some conditions can be clustered together as they jointly define the precondition. In this reverse problem tree, we can easily define the different pathways by tracking down the goal, the outcome, and the outputs. We can see here that this is one pathway, this is another pathway, and this is another pathway. After the desired results and changes are defined, we then go into defining the assumptions and the rationale. Identify the conditions or resources that your group believes are needed for the success of your program and the logic behind each causal relationship. Assumptions can be conditions that the project will work to meet or a risk that the project must mitigate. Explicitly stating the rationale allows everyone to follow the logic of the project. After that, we define the interventions. Identify the strategies or the coordinated sequence of interventions or the activities or specific actions to bring about the outcomes. In the theory of change, interventions are indicated in the connections of outcomes. Interventions can also result to multiple outcomes. Interventions are identified after defining the outcomes framework in order to be able to prioritize interventions and avoid confusion with outcomes. Then we identify the indicators or the measurable evidence of meeting a goal or an outcome. Ideally, each outcome must have multiple indicators. However, this should be prioritize to be practical. Prioritize indicators based on accessibility of information and the ability to convince people of change. Then have a quality review. Does it really make sense? Can it be done? Can it be tested? And then we write the narrative, which is a summary of the theory to, be em to emphasize major elements and to be better understood by more people. 
any questions.